You're watching Ski Dad TV. Roll on the knees and the ankles. Nice long pressure, good balance, up, over, engagement. Pointing the bases to the top of the mountain. Two clean tracks in the snow. And then it speeds up into regular speed and you can tell that I'm really not going that fast. So here I am free skiing on a green run, just trying to roll my ankles and keep good, clean ski to snow contact and really slow down my movements and just roll through the turns and feel good about what I'm doing. Now, these turns are all well and good, but it's kind of like kissing your sister. Because as soon as I get onto a pitch, these kind of moves aren't going to work. I can't just go up and over with that big long hip movement and roll my ankles into the turn when the speeds pick up or I get onto a steeper pitch. So here is a video of me on slalom skis. And you can tell that I can roll my ankles there. But as soon as the speeds pick up or the pitch gets steeper, then I need to kind of change my approach a little bit. So here we are at the top, again, slalom skis. Here we go, I push into it, first turn, and there is that same good ankle roll. Exit the old turn, unweight, roll the ankle into the new turn, maybe even a forward hip move down the hill, early edge pressure on the outside ski, rolling through good clean body position. Now I've picked up speed, and the hill is starting to get steeper. And right away you can see that I've already got a little pop I got to deal with. So there's my ski deviation. I do a little bit of the transition in the air, land on a clean ski, strong into another turn, comes the next one. Now I don't have the strength to just simply roll my ankles into this turn, nor the quickness. I just can't do it. So there's my pick up the ski, little deviation, next turn. Same thing this, there's a little more of a knee ankle move here, okay? But you can see how light I am, that I'm using a little bit of a pop float there, and the ski engagement is happening here, down a little lower in the turn, okay? Now let's look at some more, and run it out to the bottom. Good quality slalom skiing. I'm super happy with these turns, they were super fun. But at some point, I have to give up on rolling my ankles. Here we go, now I'm on a flat, on a slalom ski, and I'm able to roll my ankles through all of these turns, okay? Good ankle roll, I'm moving forward each time. Here I come over the pitch and change in tactic, change in approach, okay? Here it is coming across the flat again, simple. There's the up move, there is possibly a forward move into the turn of my hips, knee and ankle roll coming around. There it is again. Knee ankle roll, you can see that the pressure starts right here. I'm already engaging the ski. Bring it around. Next turn, still an ankle roll. And then right there, you can see, look at the tails of the skis. They're already up and deviating into the turn so that I can get my feet around, I can get into the turn and come across the hill and be able to hammer down this pitch below us. So. Knee and ankle roll, yes, it's a super important skill and everybody should go out and work on it and improve it and get good at rolling your ankles. However, it's a very limited technique in that it only works on the flats and as you move into steepness, you're gonna rely less and less on the ankle roll depending on your strength and quickness. If you're stronger and quicker, yes, you can roll your ankle on steeper and more challenging terrain, but everybody's gonna have a breaking point. And it's important to know where your breaking point is before you lose the outside ski through the completion of the turn in your free skiing or blow out of a course in a race. So knee and ankle roll, yes, super important. Yes, I do it, I love it, it's great. However, it is limited. And when I'm teaching high-end carving on steeper terrain, please know that when I say I'm not using it, I know how to do it. I have it in my skiing and I will utilize it where it's appropriate. However, it's not appropriate in all situations. So 
If you're one of those people that's in the comments saying, this is how you do it, there's a knee and ankle roll, there's a leg change. Here you can clearly see a lead change, transition, and now my old outside ski becoming the new inside ski, moves forward, there's a lead change, foot to foot. Okay, that is a good move, but again, only utilizing the flats. So I hope this helps show the difference between how you're going to ski on the flats and how you're going to ski on the pitch or at a higher intensity. I'm not trying to bag on knee and ankle roll. It is a very useful skill. It's very good. Let's just use it more appropriately. Thank you for watching Ski Dad TV. I hope this video clears some things up for you. Don't forget to tip your ski instructor. I need beer money more than anybody and keep shredding out there.